for staying with us, President Uhuru Kenyatta, Deputy President William Ruto, um, in their third day at the coast, having received more defectors from the National Super Alliance. Um, let's begin with the fact that Jubilee and NASA have been battling for the control of the coast, Mashima Um but we do know that the opposition scooped most of the votes in the region in the um, August 8th polls. These defections, do you see any weight uh, being added to your party? Are these big catches? Oh, absolutely. Very big. And in fact, Lillian, uh, being a politician, and uh, for example now an election has been called uh, like this, you look at what happened last time. You know, you look at the areas where you are weak a little bit and, uh, you know, and so on. And therefore you do. Look, if you look at the list, many people have defected from NASA. And for one simple reason, although now they are saying... These are, most of them are losers. Most of them are the election let, losers. Let, not second. losers, the election losers. Let me tell you, there is no election loser. Mm -hmm. You know, because that person who lost that election at that particular time, maybe lost by a very little margin. And if that, that, that margin was not ours, and it comes to, to our side, that is a very big for us. It's very important. Number two, don't also forget... Did, uh, Hassan, did Hassan Omar win by a small margin? He got, he got votes. He didn't, he Very didn't, few in comparison to Governor ha Ali Hassan Joe. Uh, we are not comparing Ali Hassan Joe here. Mm -hmm. this that's, is, what, yeah, and that's why I asked whether, yes, but for instance, his defection a, and that a, of the others. In a, in, in a campaign like this, no, Hassan Joe is not in the picture. We are looking at uh, the, the presidential election. We are looking at the presiden presidential vote. We are not looking at the governor's vote. If we, if, if we go, for example, 20 or... And even if we get him and his, and his wife, that is a big, uh, that's a big contribution for us. But remember also, Lillian, in <laughs> politics, in politics, there's something called perception and, 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 and confidence. By, for example, you know, for us getting uh, Omar uh -huh, for, uh, and, and a number of other people who have come, you know, it's consolidating our base. Because our, our supporters are going to be very strong and say, look, you know what, we are getting addition here, we are getting addition here. So sometimes in politics, you do something in cost, but to maintain certain votes, for example, in a certain area. It's not necessarily that you want to vote from, uh, you want, first of all, your people to look at that you are confident. And, and why are they doing that? Why are people defecting? Because they have actually lost hope in NASA. <laughs> NASA has not done some incitement, you know, not, not excitement, not incitement, excite its own supporters. <laughs> they're, not, they're not doing that. Let's they're losing hope. Excitement, they're joining us. Excitement. No, Let's excitement. listen in to they're not exciting their supporters. by a cross-section of leaders uh, there. Let's listen in. Nimekuja kusema kwamba naunga mkono Tuchaguliwa kwa Raisi Uhuru Kenyatta Hatutaki tena tuunde serikali tarehe 26 Mungu akitujalia bila ya kujumuisha watu wa pwani Watu wa pwani tutakuwa pamoja tarehe 26 jameni Kwa hivyo tutasimama pamoja tuko pamoja Mimi nataka niwashukuru sana na niwaambie ya kwamba majaliwa ya Mwenyezi Mungu tarehe 26 na mapenzi ya wa Kenya tuunde serikali tutakuwa na nyinyi ndani ya serikali hakuna pahali mimea tutakuwa pamoja na nyinyi hii serikali ni yenu again we see jubilee there campaigning aggressively that's at the coast Brian, the jubilee duo has been on a poaching spree they're targeting rilers allies do you think that this will indeed bleed and weaken NASA. Uh, truth be told, I think the fact that you're getting leaders uh, supporting Jubilee perceptionally, uh, it shows that uh, Jubilee is gaining numbers. Absolutely. And I want to use uh, this word so that you understand it clearly, perceptionally. And perception is not necessarily reality. If you were to count the actual numbers that they are getting, uh, it is just the same same leaders who have subsequently lost elections. And I can tell you for a fact, those leaders who have currently joined Jubilee, if they supported Jubilee before the presidential election, they would not get more than 10% of the votes they got. So clearly, in terms of numbers, uh, they will not add much but in terms of perceptions uh, is a good thing for Jubilee that uh, a few leaders here and there uh, are following them the one that shocked me uh, is my brother Hassan Omar who we have been in the trenches together we have been in civil society together who has stood for certain things and stood for a 
certain cause who has stood for democratization of this country who has stood for electoral reforms in this country if he can move to jubilee uh, because he lost an election uh, or whatever reasons he, ha he has uh, really uh, that uh, shocked me now I also want to tell you Lillian that those leaders they will pay very heavily in the years to come because uh, people believed that they stood for a certain cause people believed that they stood for something and yet now because they they've lost an election they are quickly uh, conforming to certain standards that they did not believe in. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, while I accept that perceptionally it is good for Jubilee, those leaders would, will pay heavily but in the years yeah, to come. But visually, and you're talking about uh, perception here, when the electorate see this wave of Jubilee and look at the other side of the political divide and not see the same level of aggression when the electorate see these defections, um, high profile defections to say the least, what message does this send? Ooh, I, I just want to jump back for a second and talk about Omar Hassan. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about, he was on the Wiper Party, right? And the Wiper Party at the very beginning had issues with ODM. Mm -hmm. So there was already friction between ODM and, and Wiper at the very, even before the election process. So this really should not be a huge surprise that Omar Hassan has, has kind of jumped ships, right? Um, and then in terms of kind of perception, uh, statesman, diplomat Harry Kissinger said that there are no permanent enemies, right? There are only interests. And I think that when you, when you look at a situation like this, there are no permanent enemies. And certainly there might be some hard feelings, but, you know, people do what's best for them. It's what's in it for me kind of mentality. And I think that's just human. That's just at the core and fundamentals of, of how humans work. Mm -hmm. so, so this, again, the Omar Hassan, I'm not necessarily surprised about because because again, there was friction at the very beginning between uh, ODM and and and, uh, and and Wiper, and who they were trying to decide and vacillating between who was going to be the flag bearer. Was it going to be Kalando or was it going to be Rayella? So so and and Omar Hassan had a lot to do with that. Right. So I don't. And, and this David, is not a surprise. Yesterday, yes, yesterday um, the presidential candidate, NASA presidential candidate, said that this would be expected. The defections are, are expected. He spoke of a fund, Jubilee having a fund um, set aside uh, for these defectors. Do you think that these defections uh, will weaken NASA? Well, for most of I think people handle losses differently. And um, when you come from an election, I, I ran myself, so I know what it is to run. You're done. You sometimes you've spent every bit you had, and then someone comes with this beautiful, alluring, you know, gift of a brown envelope. You may be tempted to cross over. But as I've said earlier, losing an election must not lead to ideological fatality or ideological suicide. Omar Hassan has been one of the very consistent voices pro-democracy. He was part of the Mageuzi in 1997 with the likes of James Orengo. He was a student leader. He was suspended for trying to fight the Moi regime. He was given, he was part of the students who went back to school after that government gave the presidential amnesty to students. Omar Hassan can now not be on the side that he castigated a couple of weeks earlier because he f it will be very hard for him to rationalize that choice but as i said you know he is a young politician he got about 42,000 votes so those are people who believed in him even though uh, joho got 221 and shabal came second with about 69,000 votes this 42,000 votes he may end up scrapping off, you never know, 10 or so percent. But I reckon that uh, earlier, you know, one time when the president was making several visits ahead of the election to coast, <laughs> the NASA leader, Raila Odinga, on a press statement said, I will let him go there six times and I will go once and wipe out what he has done. And that happened. Uh -huh. So they may enjoy the glory for now, but I think when Raila gets down to the coast, uh, the people resonate well with him because throughout the history, he's been the champion, you know, against uh, the, the land problems in the coast and so they identify much more easily with Raila's ideology a political ideology than the word with Jubilee yes. but yes. I wouldn't underestimate mm -hmm. the five or two thousand votes that he goes away with and I bet that NASA once they have committed to the election because right now they basically may not be campaigning because they say no reforms no election no reform has happened we are not going to an election no need for campaigning when they get to campaign aggressively I hope they fix
some of the teething right. problems. Well, she was the Let's not forget the fact that uh, the duo of Uhuru and Ruto have gone to the coast with a bag of goodies. Um, we're talking about um, the Nzima 2 water project, um, the pledge that they would be developed um, so that water problems in Mombasa can end. They are talking about free secondary education in public schools, which will start next year. The Kenya Ports Authority will be further um, expanded. Um, a lot of goodies there uh, from the Jubilee Brigade, and therefore NASA really um, should not underestimate this particular trip uh, to the coast from Jubilee, seeing that they are sitting back and we're not seeing them campaigning. Do you agree? that politics, I can compare the politics and the preachers. When a preacher is preaching and he gets people converted, that will be the happiest day for him. Because those people have left their sin that they have agreed to follow the Jesus. It's the same with the politics. When you go anywhere you go and you see people are coming and they are changing their mind, just as they have said, maybe because of those projects they are seeing, maybe because of what they have been promised, and also sometimes the way the leader, the way he is saying. Because all they are not saying what he is going to do, he has already done many things as a president, as a Jubilee government. They have done so many things. So maybe it will fool people to come back to the, to come to the Jubilee. And you see, if you go back in the Bible, you remember the son who was given his, his wife by the father and he was given everything and he went. When he finished, when he came back, he was received. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see a woman receiving Oman. It is making me see that he is following the book of God. That was not his son. Uh, who is the biggest? Who is the biggest? Who is the biggest? Away from that, in your estimation, who is the biggest catch for Jubilee at the coast? Um, we've seen... Um, I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Uh, just let me just finish, because they're not finished. Yes, <laughs> let me just tell you this. Let's stick to the point, though. We're yes. sticking to the point. Mm -hmm. And first, I want again to come back to you. We don't have analysts here. You can see the clear <laughs> fighting for Jubilee. That should be clear. Known that. For Jubilee. Fighting for. For. for yes. yes. Oh, all right. No, again, it's the Jubilee. Yes. The Jubilee. yes. And the other point I will tell you we don't care 50 people or the 1,000 people. The Constitution of Kenya says 50 plus one. one. Let us have one vote which we are looking for. Hmm. That is what the Constitution says. One, one vote. You might get 50, but you miss. One. one. So if we get that one, leave us alone. Let's do our strategy. Let's meet on 26, my friends. Uh, I think our biggest cut is uh, uh, the people's source of cost has seen a reality at least this time uh, uh, as we go along. And uh, I'm happy, my but friend. These are, these are regions, and talking about Nyamira last week, these are regions that have unanimously voted for you, the opposition you, previously. <laughs> Therefore, what are the chances of Jubilee actually swaying these votes in their favor? Big, the, their the, favor. The, the big chance. Look, even some things are happening which people, uh, people were not believing they were going to happen. One, as an Omar, you know, he was really critic, cri uh, biggest critic of Jubilee. He's uh, on our side, Muruti and so on. Even if people say, oh, you know, they lost, you know, and, and so on and so forth, that will be just rhetoric because they want just a defense. And I'm happy with my, my, my brother, uh, David, uh, who said that even one vote is important. Actually, it's very important, and I think in, uh, because he stood and maybe he didn't succeed, that one vote he's going to look for is very important. And, and, and our, biggest, our biggest catch, maybe past the people, of course, the business community. In fact, we're listening to some people supporting Jubilee who have never supported Jubilee for, for many years. And therefore, it's a big cut. And when you look at forward, why, why is this happening the, across the country? It's because NASA supporters, Lillian, are fatigued. They have no idea whether it's going to be election. It's not going to be election. They don't know what to do. And therefore, you mean NASA supporters or Kenyans in general? NASA supporters are fatigued. Look at look at the uh, jubilee supporters. We we just looked at people from Eldoret. What are they saying? Even if election is held today, we are ready. You you gave us also a clip from from uh, from uh, Nyeri. They are saying we, we want to go to election today. Jubilee. In fact, that is my even my prayer. And I want to tell our supporters in Jubilee, turn up in large numbers on 26th. In fact, name of Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga will be in the ballot on 26th. Please, and they want to 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 kill the morale of our people. Just. Let them kill theirs. And that is why we are getting many people. And I, I'm telling people, because NASA are not giving you any alternative, please come to Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Jubilee is giving you forward. And finally, when you say about goodies, that the president is giving out goodies and so on, you know, Lillian, 
Uhuru Kenyatta is president of the Republic of Kenya until he hands over to another person. And is enjoying powers as prescribed under Article 132. What do I mean by that? Full powers. This idea of people saying that oh, maybe uh, President is under Article 134 is, is null and void. The reason being that that election that happened was nullified. And when it was nullified, we went back to fresh election as if nothing happened on, on 8th. You see, and therefore we have gone back to eight in terms of elect, uh, election time, and therefore Uru Kenyatta is enjoying his time. I mean, enjoying uh, his powers. He is actually u utilizing those powers positively to the people, of course. And I want to thank the people, of course, of uh, supporting Jubilee. I think. Uh, let me say this first, Moshemiwa. Uh, uh, for lack of a better word, we agree with you that the president is the president until another one. However, you need to read the article. I want to invite you to read Article 134. I read the uh, sabbatical too, because there are certain powers that the president cannot exercise uh, in this time, and one of those is he cannot appoint new cabinet secretaries, no. No. he cannot appoint new judges. So as we speak, he can only do certain things. Mm. Now I want to come back to the issue Brian, of that cost I'll, I'll come right back to you. Let's cross over to the NCIC, um, where Gatun, the South Member of Parliament, Moses Kuria, is appearing um, to answer to charges on hate speech. Let's listen in. We ask those people who we think have uh, breached or, or who have been accused of uh, breaching uh, uh, or, or bringing about uh, lack of peace. We usually call those people and, and we interrogate them. The idea is to give them a chance to explain some of the things which, which probably are written, sometimes we get them from the media, sometimes they are recorded by, by our authors, and so we give them a chance to explain themselves. You know, because sometimes what somebody says uh, may not, the way we un understand it may not be the way that person meant uh, to, to say, the, to utter those words. So that's why we give a person a chance. Uh, and, and usually that would be done by the professionals, the officers here, the investigation officers. Uh, we are not involved, myself or the chairman of this, because we have our unit which does those interrogations. So we'll be expecting Moses Korea and we can re we'll record his statements. Uh, if we find that we, we have to, that there's some substance in what we are uh, investigating, then we'll prepare a file and send it to the Director of Public Prosecution. Sometimes uh, some of these issues end up here. We sometimes look at the, after the interrogation we look at to, the substance and we will find that there is nothing much then there are other ways of dealing with those issues but, but as of now I can't tell you how things will, will proceed or how we shall con conclude this issue uh, all I can say is that uh, we will wait the next few minutes and when Honorable uh, Moses Kuria comes then we will take his statement if you have specific questions then I will be able to yes Can you speak a bit louder? Sorry. Um, just a quick question. You are expected to use um, this such as water and Surya and the fine one that says that she cannot be able to make it. She won't be able to, she won't be making it her way here. Friday, that's what she told us. That's what we we, we when when the people uh, when the summons was taken to her to her office or to her house we were told that she could not be available on Friday. We, and I think we wrote another summons for, for today. We're still expecting her. If, if she doesn't come, we'll know what to do. You know, it's not a must that the person appears uh, before us. Uh, uh, as we said, we give that person who is accused a chance uh, to explain themselves. It's a normal requirement. It is a natural justice demand that the person is given a chance to explain themselves. So what is the stand of the, of the, of the commission? Is it that she is not coming, as she indicated that she is not coming, and if so, why? And how do you she is still coming? Then my second question is, was this Korea is not new to this, appearing for the commission to explain themselves? Would you have to say about that? Because this is not the first time that she is appearing for the commission. You see, if, if you keep on committing an offense, 
we are going to continue with, with that ritual. The fact that you are that you committed another offense before does not mean that we are we are going to stop interrogating you. Secondly, the fact that you have had uh, other offenses before doesn't mean that we are going to shoot you or kill you or something like that. I mean, we have to follow the law. So you commit an offense today, you'll go through the same process. You commit it again tomorrow, you'll go through the same process. It's the courts to decide what happens next, you know. It's not our responsibility ourselves. We can't, uh, you know, we are not also in, an, uh, in a banana republic or, or in some place where there are no laws where you can probably decide then this person has become too much so you shoot him or her. We can't do that. When you say that it's not a must for them to show, does that in itself interfere with your investigations if the person accused is not, is not willing to cooperate with your investigating team? Well, uh, we, we, uh, we, have, we have some options. If somebody decides not to, to obey those summons, there are certain, certain sanctions, and we have indicated it in the letter. But what I'm saying is, the fact that a person does not give their side of the story does not mean that we cannot conclude the file and send it to the director of public prosecution. We have done it before if with a number of people. You don't mind sharing probably some of the sanctions? The legal officer can tell you that it's in the letter. Yes. Uh, the law, as the current, currently uh, uh, constituted, failure to appear before the commission is an offence punishable by law. Imprisonment for a period of uh, six months or a fine of up to 200,000 shillings. But as uh, the CEO has said, through the investigative process, suspects or accused persons are given an opportunity to come and give their story under inquiry. And if they don't appear, it doesn't mean that the work will not be done. Uh, our file will be concluded, it will be taken that they wavered their rights to uh, appear and give their side of the story. At least the, community, the commission will have given them an opportunity as required by the rules of natural justice. I have a question. Yes. Uh, just from the Wanga and uh, Songo and Kuru. Oh. Could you maybe give us specifics uh, on what uh, incidences are you investigating Songo and, uh, and Wanga and uh, Kuru? Well, I don't think we are obliged to, to do that. Uh, they have committed some offense, that's one thing we know. Uh, it has elicited reaction. I, I, all of you know. You are just asking us to restate. You have seen it in the social media, what Wanga has said, what all these people have said. You keep on reading about it. Even Wanga herself has put uh, our letter on, the, on Facebook, and I'm sure you are one of the first people to read it. So just do your homework and go and find out what offense she has committed. Uh, whatever she has said has elicited some response, some reaction from certain parts of the country. I think you are aware. When uh, Wanga, Babu Owino, they made certain statements, there were problems in Vidurai and a few other places, so there was some kind of reaction. That's why, as a commission, we are obliged to take action when we find that something you have said is going to stir ethnic hatred or is going to stir some kind of uh, reaction from certain places. You see, there are so many actors in, in this process. It's not only the National Coalition and Integration Commission. There are so many actors. They are, for example, the Director of Public Prosecutions is involved. The courts are involved. As far as we are concerned, we have done our bit. We investigate and we pass on the files to the Director of Public Prosecution and then people appear in court. As to whether it has been, uh, the, uh, there have been sufficient you know, moves to, to deter this, I think you, you, you can judge for yourself uh, because of the repeat offenses and work. But we have done our best ourselves. We know that we have gone to court several times even to ask for the waiver of those bonds 
and bail because we think that if these people are held for a longer period, when per perhaps they will be careful next time. But the courts are there. The law is there. You have passed a new constitution in 2010, and you always say that uh, everything must be done according to the constitution. So it's been done according to the constitution. Bail is a right for individuals. Even, even, even uh, some people who commit murder, sometimes they are given bail. But these offenses, uh, uh, when you go to the courts, they say it's bailable. The last offense, I, I remember the last time when uh, Moses Kuria was taken to court, he was asked to commit, I think, uh, uh, to some million shillings or something like that. It's, and I think uh, if we succeed, probably that's one of the areas we are going to look at and ask the court if, if we find we have, we have not finished the investigations so I cannot make some judgment but that could be some of the angles we can look at and, and say this person probably has repeated but that, that we will only reach there after we have concluded our bid the DPP has agreed with us and then the files have gone to court That is an NCIC commissioner there, Moses Courier, appearing before the NCIC on hate speech charges. And that's the latest from that end. We'll be staying with that developing story. Brian, back to you um, on what you were saying before as regards the limited powers of the presidency, um, depending on how this pans out. I think I had just finalized that. What I wanted to say is that... Uh, if you have studied the coastal people, there are fun, certain fundamental issues that they brought forth in a number of processes that determines how they will vote. And one of those key things, you, you, you just saw there is a guy who was being interviewed and uh, he was being asked one thing and he quickly was talking about land issues. Now those issues are very important to them issues to do with the land, issues to do with what they call majimbo, meaning they would want to be in control more, they want equitable uh, distribution of resources, they want uh, resources to be ploughed within their areas, issues to do with um, uh, increased uh, allocation in terms of devolution, uh, not tokenism. So issues of saying we will do some road from here to there, uh, those are good PR stands, but they really do not translate into votes. Now, if you study these people, they don't really uh, like Raila as a person. Uh, they feel that he fights for them. They feel that uh, there is something that he's selling that identifies with them. So uh, for me, that is what Jubilee government ought to be selling, not bringing in so-and-so or this person or this and the same tokenism. Well, your response to that, that so your tokenism will not translate. Will not translate into votes Let, let me cost. say one thing. Eh? I've been in the parliament for the last time parliament and I was in the lunch committee. Let the brand not lie in this media because it's only the British government has issued the titles that any other government mm. from independent. Tokenism. Mm. Oh, you just say tokenism because you are not in there. You just oppose things just, just because you oppose. <laughs> don't think those people who are vying for the seat of the governors or what, they don't have brain enough to see why are they doing that. They have been having a capacity of being a governor, being a senator. They know what they are doing. And again, devolution is working. Up to now. Let them take their devolution and the problem which they are going through because they have been given money. Saying that they want their freedom, they want to do their own thing, it is through the devolution. And this government of Djibouti, it is capable for devolution and it has proved itself. Because now, devolution is there. In fact, the areas which devolution has been received properly, people have been getting a lot. But there are still a lot of corruption in between mm -hmm. some, some counties. Some are doing so well. So you cannot say that uh, we are just there for looking at the votes. No. And Brian, Brian is talking about this being um, a tokenism, Nekia. But then again, um, Jubilee says that the opposition has no development agenda for the country. Jubilee has tangible, tangible um, solutions to the cry of the people. They have been there. So they have been reasonable. there before. Leader was there. Mm -hmm. Kaloto was there, all those groups were there. When they are saying that, they are saying they had the opportunity to do that. 
it is not wrong to challenge and to say this is what we are doing because the, the ones who are there before they have not done that uh -huh. that's a good challenge politically that's it and I care on that I think that's reasonable I think Jubilee has done a great job of um, narrating what's wrong with the country and how they can fix it right they they've been great at kind of pointing out problem solution um, I think what uh, NASA has been great at saying is, is more kind of the social ills, but not really infrastructural, infrastructural issues. I think, and that's important. How do you fix the economy? How do you fix the roadways? How do you fix, you know, just infrastructural systems that are important to the way that Kenyans live? So, so I think the dichotomy is really, really clear. Jubilee has done a great job at, at narrating problem solution um, on infrastructural issues. NASA has done a, a fair job at narrating uh, social issues between the have and the have nots. Um, but, but the question is what really matters to Kenyans at this point? And it is about, you know, having jobs, having schools, healthcare systems that work, educational systems that work. So I think whoever can answer those questions really clearly to the public will, will I think, have, have a leg up. And, from my estimation, I think Jubilee has done a better job at that. We're getting to the top of the hour, and therefore, gentlemen and ladies, I'll be getting um, your closing remarks on this issue. A headline story this morning is the fact that Jubilee is of the opinion that NASA plans to boycott the election, that the NASA presidential candidate will not be participating in this election, and indeed, we understand that Raila Odinga will be traveling to the United Kingdom tomorrow. That's what we know as of now. David, as we begin to close, um, this hour of Citizen Extra, should NASA make good its threat not to participate in the election, then what? What happens next? What, are we, what scenarios are we looking at? There is the law. I don't know why people are worried. That you do not hold the elections on the day you estimated, which was 8th of August, doesn't mean that there is no law, there is no crisis. On the 26th? There is, uh, no, on 8th is what we end with, then 26th mm -hmm. has been okay, proposed. Right. But the laws allow for space in case, I mean, what happens if today one of the presidential candidates were to die? We would still be in the same situation as we would be if one boy cops. All right. So the law takes care of all these things, and no one needs to worry about it. My only hope would be that, you know, we are able to look at what the law stipulates, abide by it, move on, the, move the country forward. And then uh, maybe to close, just to comment on the coastal politics and uh, things like that. You see, the coastal region has been one of the regions that have had an outcry, you know, on issues of equity and equitability. Those are issues that are very close to their hearts. And of course, the Jubilee government has had a very, you know, uh, very special place having made promises in 2013 and had four and a half years to deliver on those promises. Even the ones Nakia are talking about, the hardware, right? So they had opportunities. They, did, they made promises, we will build a road here, we will build a road there. Then the, what should we should be talking about is the scorecard. Did they meet the promises they made or they came, built the, uh, the railway and are moving, you know, the coastal people, for example, have said, you're moving the dry port from Mombasa and taking it to Naivasha. Are those things that can be talked about? When and we or, focus... Or has actually denied those claims yesterday. He's well, he, he may deny, but you know, that's for the people who don't read. For us who read government policy papers, mm -hmm. that's far from the truth. That's for mm -hmm. cosmetics. So now, when we focus on hardware, which is a very good thing in terms of improving the economy, hardware is good, but in this scenario, hardware has only but provided for opportunity for plunder and heist and corruption. Now, we are talking about software issues. Software issues are what we'll talk about. Do the members of the different social strata feel they belong in the country? Or is it a country of a few billionaires and a whole million of beggars? Uh -huh. That's what NASA, I bet, is talking about, which is as important as is infrastructural improvement. When all is said and done, Kenyans will have to make their choice. I hope that we stick by the law. If Raila boycotts election, should IBC not make the reforms, the irreducible minimums that Raila had asked for I, I can almost guarantee knowing him very well he will not go into those elections then we will have three months to prepare for fresh yeah. elections uh, uh, Moshima Ganjiri yeah. your closing yeah. remarks for you as Jubilee should um, your competitors your political yes. competitors not um, be on the ballot come the 26th of October what then for this nation well, what, what I would say it will not be good at all it comes a time that the nation is bigger than a person or it is bigger than a party so i don't think it's been fair that 
we put the country in the mood of fighting and bringing the economy down because of politics. Anybody who can come in as leader or who will lead this country. So let's agree and go according to the law. But I am I'm confused with these people. The expression, my friend, here. <laughs> Sometimes you say <laughs> the law must be followed. Yes, that's the law. Then the other time we are saying no. Boycotting is part of it the law. It should not be no. amendment of those laws. So I I, I feel it's much on him because boycotting I, is a choice. Let me finish. Because I don't understand you. When I say I don't understand you, because sometimes you say this, sometimes again you go back to this. We, we must agree what he is saying, it is what we are, we are agreeing. And it's actually we want a to nothing matter because Kenyans yes, are confused. Yes, ma'am. What we need to do now, what we need to do now, as members of the parliament elected on behalf of the people, we want to do a amendment which will make us go through according to the law, not in the streets, not burning people, not rooting. We go straight away on the constitution. What does it say? Mm. Let's go there and fight there. Very quickly. The Nini. And don't bring us activists in the parliament. We are going to deal inside with elected leaders. Mm -hmm. Brian, as we close, of course, we're looking forward um, to the electoral laws amendment bill this afternoon. We're going to be hearing from Bonge what the way forward on that is. For you, should Raila Odinga not appear on the ballot come the 26th of October, what would be the way forward for this nation? I think I've addressed myself to that matter many times in this uh, discussion. Uh, for me, my final comments would be, I think this country is so divided. And when I look at NCIC uh, coming out now, it makes me ask very fundamental questions. Uh -huh. um, now is when NCIC is actually summoning Moses Korea. Yet he has been at it uh, since... Uh, I don't know how many uh, months ago. So it is very sad. And if you ask me, uh, in all fairness, uh, that institution needs to be disbanded. I think it's a waste of resources. Mm -hmm. It is a waste of our money. It is a waste of our time. It is a waste of our expectations as a country. Um, uh, it is very sad that we've really dichotomized our minds. Uh, and when I look at my Bishop Oginde talking about dichotomy of minds, mm -hmm. that if I don't agree with what Kimani Ngojiri believes in, he says, I belong to NASA. If Nakia does not believe in what uh, he believes in, or, then you start dichotomizing uh, and segmenting people. I think uh, this country is beyond Jubilee and, and NASA. This country is about certain interests that we believe in. And I think as a country, let's come together at this particular time and see how we can uh, really think about this country mm -hmm. moving forward. Come together meaning dialogue? Dialogue as uh, all stakeholders whether Jubilee or Kenyans or civil society or diplomatic uh, oh. um, uh, people of the diplomatic call. Uh, let's come together and chat a way forward that can actually help us as a country. We're, we're out of time Moshima Hussein. Uh, uh, you know, thank you very much. One, let me just wrap up that issue of cost. Uh, somebody saying, oh, Jubilee maybe is not addressing the issues of the cost, which are land issues. That is far from the truth. We, Jubilee has been doing that a lot. And after all, let's turn the, the coin the other side. NASA was, uh, Ryder was, was the Prime Minister. What did he do? Nothing. Orengo was, uh, in fact, in charge of lands, was a minister of lands. What did he do? Nothing. So what's going on now? He's only pleading for, for, for emotions, so that will not win them. Number two, going forward, uh, I, I'm very certain that uh, this country cannot go to crisis or something like that. And because court took us where we are, and that is why we are back again, mm -hmm. I'm very certain. Should, should Raila not be in the ballot uh, uh, paper uh, on 26th? Uru Kenyatta will declare the president under article 138 one. That, that, that for sure. Because where we are, what people are not understanding, and uh, in fact, uh, Lillian, you'll agree and, uh, and, and maybe give them advantage. The people who are talking, maybe because they are going to be seen by Baba from the TV, so that maybe in future they, are, they, they win in, their, in, in, in wherever they come from, they want to speak the language that Baba will hear. So that, you know, because if you go against Baba in some places where some of these guys I'm are sure he's from, planning his trip. He might not no, be No, no, these guys are so that the yeah. Baba can, but I will assure you, I will tell you, they have already officially been nominated under uh, 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 
cassette notice number eight seven fifty one. The only thing that can happen by law, if you if 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 you if you don't want to do that, then that means that you are turning down your your nomination. Uh -huh. And then when you turn down your nomination like this under that uh, uh, cassette notice, one thirty eight comes in, and yeah. president will be declared president. And Nakia, like finally, there's yeah. been this back and forth that has dominated political talk in studios across the country. Mm -hmm. We are fast approaching the October twenty sixth date, looking at a constitutional crisis because this is a story. I mean, this is a replica of all discussions that have been held in different media houses in this nation. The bottom line is that Kenyans do not understand whether or not there will be an election on the 26th of October. Is there an end in sight? Um, I, from all intents and purposes, I don't think that there will be an election on the 26th. It doesn't seem that NASA will be participating. They say they will in one report, in one uh, press release, and then in another uh, press conference, they say that they won't and they'll boycott. So you just don't know. I I tend to believe that there will not be, and because Ryle has been very clear to say that if IABC is not reformed, he is not showing up to the election. But I do, I do want to bring this up. Perhaps, perhaps, as some uh, theorists and polit political scientists have, have, have uh, mentioned, perhaps a rotational presidency is in order, right? So right now we have dynasties that have been ruling and two or three tribes that have been ruling Kenya for the last 50 or 60 years. Um, and while, and they've been very wealthy, very rich, and becoming wealthier by the day, while the majority of Kenyans stay relatively below the poverty line in abject poverty. So perhaps rotational presidency um, w which will allow all Kenyans or all you know leaders of the Kenyan tribes to, to rule might maybe that's that's a possible solution uh, moving forward. Who knows? Interesting. Um, and we've been talking and lady thank you very much it's been it's it's been great um we were joined in studio by david Osiani, political analyst nikia white she's a ceo global ladder political management. Also with us was Kimani Gunjiri, member of parliament, Bahati, Brian Weke, political analyst, and of course David Kusing, member of parliament, Pokot South. So thank you for your time. Brian, of course, is up next with the day's trends. Don't go far. <laughs>